And we're back. Thank you all for joining us on the Great Compromise podcast. We had a short hiatus, but we're back again. Uh, I'm GOP Jim, and with me as always, Victoria the Democrat. Hello, happy to be back. Me too. I We have a great topic here. We are answering the question, should billionaires exist? And this is an interesting one, because it's not a question you've heard being thrown around years ago, like 10 years ago, or even five years ago. But right now, it's a popular topic. And so Victoria and I thought it would be an interesting one to talk about. And it's actually kind of funny. When we started doing research for this topic, uh, Jeff Bezos was the richest man on Earth. And uh, as of today, it's Elon Musk. And so we'll see who it is tomorrow, but we're going to probably throw Bezos' name around a lot more than Musk. But, you know, they're both so rich i think it's pretty interchangeable anyways yeah they can handle it either way they're both doing just fine <laughs> yeah they're they're doing just fine so anyways let's get into it i'm on the pro side so and i'm con so let's hear your side i'll start the main problem with the question should billionaires exist is that there's no good way to accomplish this people always say tax the rich but if it was that simple we would have been already doing that the top 1% typically do not make their money from income, so raising income taxes doesn't hurt them. Well, what about a capital gains tax? That's when money made from selling investments like stocks are taxed. Well, history shows that raising the capital gains tax actually lowers tax revenue. People are less incentivized to invest and, of course, do it less as a result. Billionaires do not just put their money under the mattress. They invest it. And whether we like it or not, the top 1% are huge investors and contribute significantly into the economy. If we take away their incentive to invest, we're only hurting ourselves. So what is considered the best way to tax them then? Typically, people point to a wealth tax, but that doesn't mean it works. But let's start with what the word wealth actually means. It does not mean just money people have in their accounts. Wealth is the estimation of the value of all assets of worth owned by a person. So when we're discussing a wealth tax, we're talking about taxing people based on an estimated number for money they don't necessarily even have. It would force them to sell property, stocks, companies, or possessions in order to pay for it. Or of course they could just leave and pay nothing at all. Liberals often look to Europe for policy guidance, but this time they clearly haven't. The experiment with the wealth tax in Europe was a failure in many countries. Francis, for example, contributed to the exodus of an estimated 42,000 millionaires between 2000 and 2012, among other problems. And the other year, France finally dropped it. In 1990, 12 countries in Europe had a wealth tax. Today, there's only three, Norway, Spain, and Switzerland. According to reports, there were some clear reasons why. It was expensive to administer, it was hard on people with lots of assets but little cash, it distorted saving and investment decisions, it pushed the rich and their money out of taxing countries, and it didn't raise much revenue. A wealth tax just doesn't work. I've talked about all the taxes billionaires don't pay, but how about the taxes they do? Because it's a lot more than you'd think if you just listen to the media. In fact, the top 1% already pay 40% of the taxes in the country. This doesn't even count property tax, corporate tax, payroll tax, sales tax, or whatever else they're paying. In fact, I can't find those numbers anywhere because all everyone seems to focus on is income tax. That's not the only tax that exists. We always hear about making the rich pay their fair share, but we can't create policy based on perceived fairness. You know what would really be fair? Letting people keep the money they've earned. This week, I'm on the con side. I'm against billionaires hoarding resources. To be clear, I'm not against wealth accumulation, but income inequality really does matter. And with the state of things today, people hoarding their resources is unethical. In a moment, I'll share some facts to highlight the way our global issues could be greatly helped by putting money and resources in the right places. Instead, we have billionaires sitting on more money than they could hope to spend in a lifetime. I don't argue that people have worked hard and created life-changing inventions in order to earn their wealth. It's heartbreaking that some people are dying of starvation while others have more money than they know what to do with. For example, 
the estimated cost to end global warming is $300 billion. With the exponential rise of the stocks of pharmaceutical firms during the pandemic, COVID-19 vaccines have created nine new billionaires. The combined wealth of these people is more than enough to vaccinate everyone in the world's poorest countries. The Washington Post recently published an analysis from news organization ProPublica, which said that the 25 richest Americans, including Jeff Bezos, Michael Bloomberg, and Elon Musk, paid little to nothing in federal income taxes between 2014 and 2018. My second point is surrounding the ethics of being a billionaire. Several studies over the years have shown how billionaires often use unethical means to hoard money that others need and they wield a lot of political power. According to the report published in The Guardian, the richest 1% of America owns 40% of all the wealth but pays 20% of all the taxes. Increasing billionaires tax by just 10 percentage points would create about $3 trillion, which is enough to make all college free at public universities. No one can ethically become a billionaire. Amazon, for example, has been shown to sh provide poor working conditions without bathroom breaks. Some warehouses are not even air conditioned, making it a deadly risk to work there. There are carbon emissions and oftentimes emergency services on hand. My last point is surrounding taxes. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez says it's wrong to have a system that allows billionaires to exist alongside poverty, and I agree. At the top, the tax code is actually regressive, meaning that the more they make, the less they pay. The richest 1% own nearly 40% of all the wealth, but again, pay only 20% of all the taxes. Taxing the super rich would generate revenue that could be put to better use than letting that money sit in a bank account. A new tax rate would be about the same overall rate that the richest 1% paid back in the 1940s and 50s. The rate would increase overall average tax rate by 10 percentage points. It would generate $3 trillion in revenue over the next 10 years and still leave the 1% with an average post-tax annual income of more than $1.4 million. $3 trillion is enough to make college free at all public universities make a massive new investment in infrastructure, and triple budget for the National Institute of Health. Income and wealth taxes at those levels would be higher than we have now, but it wouldn't be so high to actually abolish billionaires. The rich would still be richer than everyone else, just slightly less so. Taxing the rich would make our economy work more like it should, and if we disincentivize hoarding at the top, money will more easily flow to the workers and families who really drive economic growth. The tax revenue we generate would be put to good use, investing in working people, communities across the country, and in our collective future. We could have a thriving middle class, widespread economic security, and real opportunities to give the next generation a better life. Thank you, Victoria. Well, where to start? Um, I think we're going to start at the, the ethics argument you made. Great. Is it ethical to hoard resources, as you put it? Mm -hmm. um, I think hoarding resources isn't, isn't accurate, isn't what I would call it. They're not smog sitting on a mountain full of gold, right? They, there's this misconception out there that these people these billionaires, the top 1%, whatever you want to call them, the Jeff Bezoses of the world aren't using their, their money, right? There's this misconception that they put it all under their mattress and then it never goes back into the economy. They're hoarding resources, right? Well, that's not true, though. They're, they're investing it, which puts resources back into the economy. They're creating businesses, which put, puts resources back into the economy. They're giving to charity, which puts resources, well, not exactly into the economy, but they're giving it to charity. So the money is still getting out there. So I, I don't, definitely don't think it's accurate to say they're, they're hoarding it when they are definitely using it. Last year, previously when Jeff Bezos was the richest man on earth, he also was the most charitable man on earth. He gave the most money to charity out of anyone else. And that has been true as long as he's been the richest man. So... I don't think it's a fair assessment to say he's hoarding wealth. Would you agree? I think that in ratio to the wealth that someone has, 
their charitable giving like should be pretty high, right? If Jeff Bezos is the richest man on earth, then him being the most charitable man on earth makes sense. I think that's how it should be. But the truth is that that's not true of all the one percenters. Plenty of people are donating purely because of the tax cuts and like the benefits that that gives them back. Uh, You can actually increase your wealth by donating a portion of it. Why is that bad? It's not, I'm just saying it's, if we're talking ethics, it's not selfless. And there are plenty of people benefiting from, for example, the pandemic, but millions are still suffering, right? Like if we're hoarding resources, that's increasing your own wealth over helping people who desperately need it. Let me go back just a a hair here too. The government creates these tax incentives to people who give to charity. Mm -hmm. I would argue that's a good thing and that we should probably do more of that even to incentivize people to give even more. Yes, it is self-serving, but ultimately it is going to help people. I don't think that's bad in any way. I, I would support more of that. I would support more giving as well. I'm just stating our argument is on ethics. So it's not that they're like, Oh, I was wrong about Jeff Bezos. He's actually like Santa Claus. It's benefiting him to donate. It's not like I would really use that as a pro billionaire. Okay, I'm not like defending the personalities of these people. I I don't think anyone can or should, but I'm not sure the reasons that he gives all that money to charity is as important as the fact that he does it. You know what I mean? Sure, but my point is that is it really him giving a ton of money to charity in ratio to what he has? I'm not sure the ratio is important. I, I, I disagree on the ratio being such an important factor. If Jeff Bezos, I don't remember how much money he has, but let's say he has $50 billion. It's, it's probably more than that, but let's say he does, and he gives... $50 million to charity each year, and that's still the most anyone ever gives to charity. Is it a small ratio of his wealth? Sure. Is that a small amount of money he's giving to charity? No, that is a huge amount of money he's giving to charity, and I still think that's great. It, I don't think the ratio matters there. The reason that the ratio matters is because we're arguing whether or not they're hoarding resources. So that's why I'm bringing ratio into it. No, right. I, I disagree. I mean, in the charity case, it doesn't matter the ratio of his money he's giving away. It doesn't. It, the pure dollar amount is what matters. Then how? I will else? never give fifty million dollars to charity. I, I won't. And so, fifty million dollars a year is a huge sum of money that goes to help people, and I think that's good. It is, but how else are we going to tease apart what is hoarding resources if we're not looking at in ratio to the well? Well, that brings us back to what is wealth. He doesn't have, again, let's say it's $50 billion. He doesn't have $50 billion of cash sitting around ready to give away at a moment's notice. This is an estimation of the value of his assets, the value of Amazon, the value of Amazon stock, the value of the properties he owns, and pieces of art, Every, you know, whatever he has. Mm-hmm. It's, it's an estimated value. The man does not have that much money sitting in his bank account. So when we say he's hoarding resources, again, he's not sitting on a mountain of gold. He would have to sell everything he owns to have that estimated wealth number that we we say he has. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I definitely get your point. But Mm -hmm. if it's ethics that we're arguing, then we can't ignore the fact that this pandemic and specifically profits from the vaccines have created nine new billionaires. Right. So people are getting profound wealth from a situation in which that wealth could be more than enough to vaccinate everyone in the world's poorest countries. It's the inequality that is astounding. And I think that the way people are holding on to this wealth and able to continue to accumulate it and the vast inequality between the lowest levels of poverty and the highest levels of wealth is the ethical issue I'm arguing. But here's the thing. Those two issues aren't actually related, right? The fact that there are poor people and the fact that somebody is profiting off of a pandemic, those are not related issues. 
we would like them to be related because wouldn't it be nice if that money went to those people? But they're, they're not related. There's new billionaires now because all the governments in the world are paying Pfizer and Moderna to make them vaccines, right? And so I, I assume the vaccine people are the new billionaires. I don't know for yeah. sure. I don't know their names, but okay, it's them. So that that's why. So like their companies did a good thing that have saved a lot of lives and they have now made a lot of money. That is unrelated to the poverty in the world. Th- those two things do not relate at all. That doesn't make sense to me because if we're talking about wealth, then wealth and poverty are directly related. Yes, but those people making money in a pandemic is not related to people who were already poor. No, it's the inequality that is the ethical issue. But why are we giving money from these billionaires to unrelated people? How, that doesn't. Why, why are we doing that? What do you mean unrelated people? You want to do a wealth tax on the richest 1% mm-hmm. and use it for other things. Right. But why... Okay, so, okay, let me back it up a little bit. Okay. You and I go to work. We are not the 1%. Can you confirm that? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not the 1%. We go to work. We earn a paycheck. Do we deserve to keep that money? A portion of it. I mean, we're paying yes. taxes as well. We are paying taxes, as any modern society should do. We pay taxes, and then the rest of the money we get to keep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now we have $10,000 in our bank account, just to throw a number out. And the government comes and says, you know what? We didn't tax you enough the first time. We're going to take five grand out from your bank accounts because that's what you owe us now. Okay? Mm -hmm. Does that seem fair? After you already pay taxes and you've earned that money and it's been sitting in your account, is it fair to then have to give more back when you didn't have to in the first place? I don't think that is paying attention to all the gray areas, right? Like that's a very black and white example in which I would be tempted to say, no, that's not fair, but it's the unethical inequality that doesn't sit right with me. So if I was making a massive amount of money, I would be concerned with where else I'm like putting those resources, like who else I'm helping. And I know that billionaires can be very charitable, but it's the the structure of like the vast difference in income that doesn't make ethical sense to me. I understand that people are working hard, providing new services, creating new vaccines and inventions, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think that that's an important contribution, but it's the fact that there are such levels of wealth and such depths of poverty still, like in this day and age, no one should be dying of malnutrition with the technology that we have for, you know, GMOs and everything else, right? Like it's just a vast error in concentration. Okay. I I don't see those as necessarily related issues. But I think, the, personally, I think the way to solve them is through charitable donations, right? The, you choosing to give your money to help these causes instead of being forced to give your money to help these causes. Does that make sense? Right, but who's choosing without, like, the government's hand, you know? like. Well, that's why we create incentives so they choose to do it. Even if it's just for those incentives, they're still choosing to give their money to charity. And Mm -hmm. I don't see that as bad. In fact, that's very good. That is good. Okay. It's, I just don't think we're answering my question. Like, it's the inequality that is unreasonable. The amount of suffering that continues to happen when we have the resources in our economy to fix it. So I guess we need to talk about how this inequality comes to be then, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about our boy Bezos again. This man made Amazon, okay? It is the most successful company 
in the world, probably. I don't know. Don't quote me on that one. It's a successful company. Mm-hmm. It makes a lot of money. He founded it. He runs it. I don't really remember which one's which. He does something at the top of Amazon, right? Yeah. I think he founded it. It's a successful company. People buy its products. The money goes back to the company. He makes money. I mean, his income is limited, but he has a lot of stock value, which raises his wealth number. Mm -hmm. And now he's the second richest man in the world. What is inherently wrong with any of that? That the people working for Amazon are um, not allowed to have bathroom breaks or that some of the warehouses aren't air conditioned and people that work for emergency services just know to wait outside those warehouses because on a hot day, someone is going to collapse. Mm -hmm. Like, it's the way that those are run, the way that the wealth is kept to the top of the company, not the people helping to grow and support its function. That's an error, right? Well, that, that's some mismanagement. I, I agree there, okay? But there's other companies, successful companies, that don't do that. And they still have billionaires found, who founded them. I don't know, McDonald's is still, or Walmart, I don't know. They don't have the same conditions and they still have billionaires at the top. Mm-hmm. So it's not impossible to get there without exploiting somebody, you know what I mean? It kind of has you think to it's a, be you think they impossible have to, to become a billionaire ethically. It's not ethically possible to be a billionaire. I think it's the same as, like, any high level of power. You probably did some pretty shady things to get there. Okay. But that's not what we're talking about today. Like, it's not about what is the quality of character of these billionaires. It's about is it ethical? I mean, should there be billionaires? And I think, you know, if we go back to our minimum wage episode and how impossible it is to survive off of minimum wage, these billionaires are made richer by having a lot of employees that are making low incomes to continue their function and the percentage that they make at the top. Okay. So in our capitalist society... People choose to have these jobs. Mm-hmm. If you don't like the working conditions at that place, you can go find a different job. And yet people don't necessarily do that, which means to me that it probably pays okay. I think it means that plenty of people have a hard time finding jobs um, with the level of education they were able to attain and don't have time to be job hunting because they're trying to feed their families and they can't risk losing what is doing the bare minimum right now. I wouldn't guarantee that everybody's thrilled to be working minimum wage jobs or else they would have changed something, right? Like, it's pretty hard to get out of poverty. Okay, fair enough. I understand your perspective. Let's talk about taxes then, because you mentioned Income and wealth tax, and I brought up both of those myself. So, starting with income tax, uh, again, I'm going to talk about Bezos. Why not? He doesn't make a high income. In fact, he purposefully keeps his income low to pay lower income tax. Okay? So, raising the income tax isn't going to do much on these billionaires. They all do that, right? So, that's not a solution. So then we come to the wealth tax. And I, and I talked about this a bit. You talked about it a little bit. It, it's hard to do, right? Because it's, you're taxing based on an estimated number. It's not a real number. It's an estimation of assets. And it's hard to put values on some things. As they saw in Europe, this didn't really work. And in fact, I have a fun anecdote from Europe. In some European countries, they exempted artwork and antiques from the wealth tax on the grounds that they were too hard to value, right? And that created a loophole for the wealth tax and let these mega rich people buy up a bunch of art and basically trade art between each other to avoid taxes. Okay, so that begs the question, would we have the same problem here? And it's not just on art. I mean, it's hard to value some of these, a lot of their assets. I mean, it's somewhat easier to say what the stock values are, but it's 
What is a pe- piece of property worth? What is a piece of art worth? Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. So it's it's very difficult to implement this wealth tax. And I'm not sure it's good to do anyways. We're essentially punishing somebody for being successful in this country. We've talked about how there is a wealth gap. Of course, there's a wealth gap. But if we're going to punish people for actually making it and succeeding, what is the point? See what I'm saying? I do. I do. And I think it's fascinating, your points about the wealth tax and the art loophole. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I find that really interesting. I like the examples that you share from the experiments that Europe has had over the years of changing their tax laws and going back and everything. I think that's great. But what I'm noticing is that I think that the the perspective that each of us have in this argument is pretty different. Like you're very focused on the ins and outs of the taxes and how that's going to happen. Whereas I think when it's a popular argument today of whether or not billionaires should exist, I think the the argument against is really um, income inequality and like the the everything that we were just saying, right? Yeah. Like I think that's we're coming at it from two different points. Well, what I'm saying is that the people who are arguing against billionaires don't have a good solution to end billionaires. Th- yeah. That's what I'm saying. The What's being proposed is generally a wealth tax and a capital gains tax and an income tax. And these things don't work. And so now I'm saying, okay, let's hypothetically say billionaires shouldn't exist. Mm-hmm. We know the things you're proposing don't work. So what are we going to do? So what about your suggestion of incentivi- incentivizing giving more? incentivizing charitable donations. Yeah. I would love that. I don't know anyone who would be against that personally. Great. How come we're not doing that? Well, I don't work for the government anymore. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be great. It wouldn't be a total solution. Billionaires would still exist. We'd be giving them tax breaks. It's, these incentives are essentially tax breaks on the other side. So they're giving money out for charity, but they're getting tax breaks too. So it may, I don't know if it'll be a wash. I, I don't know. That honestly sounds like a solution to me because with the tax um, hikes that are being proposed, billionaires are still going to exist. Like it's not a matter of making them extinct. That's not really possible. That's not what anyone is actually proposing. Well, the argument is should billionaires exist? So some people are proposing, no, they shouldn't. Yes, but the political, like, agendas to raise taxes are not going to wipe out billionaires. There's Clearly. no solution Cl- there's no good that solution. is going to get rid of billionaires. Right. But I th- but we may have just solved the problem here. I think we're today. geniuses, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, incentivize uh, charitable donations. We did it. Merry I think that Christmas. Would cover it. Merry Christmas, America. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> This has been the Great Compromise Podcast. Thank you for listening. Please share with your friends if you liked this episode and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at The Great Comp Pod. Link in the description. We will see you again next week. Take care.